There is one extra diagram, and it's a simple one. There's one extra diagram we need um, to actually work out this volume. And the important thing is, it's these triangles, clearly, right? Um, once I work out the area of each of these triangles, I'm going to multiply by a width. Have a look, what kind of width is it going to be? It's a delta x, because look, it's horizontally oriented, right? So once I work out the area, I multiply by delta x, that's my thickness, and then I add them all up. I'm going to integrate, and you can see, it's actually a very, very simple domain to go under. So let's draw this diagram. Each of my triangles is going to look quite different, but I'm just going to draw a typical one, something that might be in the middle. I'm going to draw this line down the middle because it'll be important to me in a second. I want to work out the area of this triangle, okay? Now, you tell me, what do we know about this triangle already? Okay, so it's, it's isosceles, and remember we said it's not just isosceles, they're side length one. Cool? That's helpful. What else do we know about this thing? Okay, now the base length, <coughs> noting that the base length comes from these vertical lines, and this is why this diagram is kind of helpful to us, right? So each one of these vertical lines, the green ones, represents this whole length, okay? So how do I work out what this whole length is? Yeah. Um, because um, half of it is y, like a distance from the, um, the x-axis to y, Yep. the y-coordinate. So uh, since you have two halves of it, you, uh, you'll end up having two y for the entire base. Perfect, okay. So you can see, just in case you're not catching that, right? That distance that I put there is a distance like this. That's that distance, right? It's half of the base, okay? And clearly, that's the y coordinate, which is just defined as cos x. Okay? So therefore, I've got this part is y, which is cos x. So the base is just double that, okay? However, I'm not even going to work out what double that is, because when I work out the area of a triangle, I'm going to have to halve that anyway. So I'm going to call this, uh, I'm going to be a bit naughty and put a... Uh, another thing here. This is half the base. Half the base. So to get the area of this triangle, all I need now is the height. Yeah, the perpendicular height. So that's this length here, h. How do I work it out? Just Pythagoras. Yeah, in fact, this is a special triangle, right? This is, this is the Pythagorean triangle in the unit circle. This is sine squared plus cos squared equals one squared, right? So in fact, this is just sine x. Okay. Um, if you like, of course, you can actually say, oh, let's just do the whole thing. Um, h equals the square root of 1 squared minus cos squared x. Be like, oh, yeah, that's going to be. Um, in this case, all I'm interested in is just the positive value because it's a height. Yes? So I'm just going to say, um, being it's a length, I don't worry about the negative case. Um, I mean, the fact that I put a square root at the front means that's the only, I really should put that here. I'm not interested in the negative solution. Okay. Right, so now, just as a bit of working to help me, and you'll see there's really, really very little working required. <coughs> I'm going to say the volume is equal to, all right, what am I adding up and what's getting smaller? We already have the width of all of these um, triangular slices, right? So what limit should I write at the front? Point you to, help me out. Thank you. Good job, Mark. Okay, now I'm adding stuff up. Okay, what am I adding and where? Okay, now importantly, I am going from naught to pi on two, but the reason I'm going to naught to pi on two and not, for instance, negative one to one, because sometimes you'll have to do it that way, is because look where I'm adding from. I'm going horizontally. I'm marching across from here to here, yes? So that's why I'm going to say x equals zero and I'm naught to pi on two. Okay. All right, now what are these things that I'm adding up? Well, I need the area, and then I'm going to multiply by delta x, which is the width of all the triangles. So we already established that the area is base times height on 2, which is um, base times height on 2. So what's it equal to? Cool. What is base? Sinus. Yeah, very good. I'm going to write the sign at the front because it's going to be useful for me in a second. And then I've got my width of all of my triangular slices, okay? This is not complicated at all, let's do this. Turn it into an integral, right? So I'm going from naught to pi on two. While you're at it, while you're at it, you might say, oh, hey, sine x cos x, by the way, there's lots of ways to do this, clearly. You could do it by, um, you could do this by reverse chain rule too. Do you notice that? Because if you cheat, this is your f, that's f dash, right? But, you know, I, I don't immediately go there. My brain goes first here. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. and, um, that's an integral. Yes? 
okay? So um, I can integrate this fairly easily. I'm gonna slot that puff out the front. And then I'm gonna say, okay, when you integrate this, where did it come from? Just the sine 2x. Where did it come from? Very close. It came from negative a half. Close to x, right? Because you've got there. Are, there are two things happening. The negative comes from the fact that cos turns into negative sign, so you correct with the negative. And where does the half come from? Two x. It comes from the inside derivative, right? So I'm going to multiply by this by negative a half, and then that leaves you with a cos two x inside. Yep. Can we just double check? Because we did a couple of things in our head. If you differentiate cos 2x, you're going to get negative 2 sine 2x, but that negative 2 is exactly going to cancel here, so you're fine. Okay? Uh, that leaves you with a negative 1 over 4 out the front. Okay, what's going to be inside here? Negative 1. Okay, I'm actually going to do the, I'll, I'll write the, the values first. So cos of pi minus cos of 0, <coughs> minus a quarter. Negative cos of pi, of course, is negative 1 minus 1. Minus one. So that's negative 2. That's half. Units cubed. It's volume. Okay, now, I'm really glad we kind of look at that and like, hmm, really? Like, sometimes you want numbers to come out nice, and when numbers come out disastrously, you're like, oh no, I've done something wrong. But then you look at this and you're like, well, maybe they're too simple, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. Remember before I asked you, remember before I asked you, okay, what do you want to compare this thing to? What do you want to compare it to? Now, does anyone have any ideas? Um, could you take the middle triangle and make a prism? Okay, so you could say, all right, I've got some small triangles over this end. I have some other small triangles on this end, right? So therefore, somewhere in the middle, there's kind of like an average triangle, and then I can multiply across. However, that's going to be problematic for me, right? Because, well, number one, there's the base, which causes a problem. Number two, this in fact is not, I mean, I called it an average triangle but it's average in the sense of um, width versus height. But it is not average at all in comparison to area, right? Because in fact, you have zero area on this end, zero area on that end. So this guy's not average. He's the biggest one of the lot, right? Or somewhere in there, okay? So therefore, a prism, well, it'll get me somewhere there, but nah, it will be problematic. Okay. Here's what I'm going to suggest. Um, this shape on the bottom, it's weird because it's curved, okay? But the shape that it's closest to, in terms of polygons, is a triangle, isn't it? Like, here, 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 here. I know I'm lopping off large parts of it, but at least I've got the basic idea, right? In the same way, when I look at this whole shape, remember I said opera house sale type thing? It starts low and it comes up to this um, top here, right? Now, if I'm willing to convert this, sorry, not convert, approximate this with a triangle, right? See this blue um, outline here? I can pro um, approximate that with a triangle too. Now if I do that, what kind of shape do I have? You're going to get something kind of like a pyramid, right? Uh, in fact, you're going to get a triangular pyramid. I'm going to get rid of this now, so you can see properly. <coughs> um, which has four sides, and because it has exactly four sides, we call it, ah, oh, does anyone know? We call it a, we call it a tetrahedron. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to picture that. That is my simplified base now. It's my simplified base. Okay. And what I'm going to come up from there is they're going to come up to a point like so. Okay. So here's my tetrahedron. And all I'm doing here is trying to work out, well, if I can work out the volume of this thing, it should be roughly in the same ballpark as, as that. Yes? Okay, well, I need some dimensions, right? Um, uh, for a pyramid, does anyone, and I wouldn't expect you to remember because it's back in stage five, does anyone remember the volume of a pyramid formula? I'll give you a clue. It starts with a thing. Yeah, very good. So you get that base area, right? And then you take the perpendicular height. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's do them one step at a time. Um, that area, how would you like me to work it out? Almost, very close. Uh, what's this base here, if I call that the base? That's going to be one that way and one that way. So this is two. Do you agree? If I'm defining that as the base, where is the perpendicular height? Very good. It's, um, it's tracing along the x-axis, isn't it? Right? That's pi on 2. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah you were close, right? So, so therefore, the area of the base is um, half base times height. So it's 1 times pi on 2. Fine. Uh, what about the height of this pyramid? I've actually got a perpendicular here. 
right? And this has to be this one, this thin one by one one isosceles triangle, right? So that gives me a height. Okay, a third times you told me the base area is pi on two. You said the height of one. So this apparently is pi on six, which I think you'll find is about zero point five two, which is not too shabby at all. Okay, now of course that was just a, an approximation exercise, right? But at least we know we're in the ballpark. I think it's somewhat coincidental that it ended up so close because you see, we added some areas, we took away some areas, but 